Hey, hi guys, welcome to the Quant Lab. The Quant Lab में आपका स्वागत है. In this video, we will be talking about plotting. This has been one of the conversations which a lot of people have asked me. So what I'm trying to do is, you know, just walk through some basic plotting in Python. This is not an exhaustive tutorial. However, is a good enough introduction if you want to play around with, let's say, stock data. Add some technical indicators, and I'll throw in a, a bonus library, which is Plotly towards the end, which is slightly more powerful than the more traditional Matplotlib. So let's get started. Quick, quick check if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do. I talk about Python, AI, machine learning, reinforcement learning, and a lot of these techniques in the trading world. So please do subscribe, like, put in a comment if you want to learn something new or if there's a query that you have. Let's get to the code. So there's some basic sanity which I always do. So I have Yahoo Finance which is imported and that's what I'm going to use as my data provider. Pandas is usually helping around data manipulation. Date time is a library which I use to calculate date differences and intervals. NumPy is, I'm guessing everyone is familiar and it's a very nice library. Pretty much the de facto standard for all sorts of array operation and numerical computation within you know, the Python ecosystem. TALib is a library which is largely used by technical indicator indi to generate technical indicators. And matplotlib is the finally the library uh, that we use for plotting. So I'm trying to describe both of these, all of these libraries in a single line so that, you know, for beginners who are new to the channel and who, who have, who are not familiar with this, they get us, you know, one line and introduction. Now this, these are some standard imports as well. So when you import matplotlib, you typically import, you know, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. This is a very standard statement and most of the cases, this will be same. This is the part where I'm just putting a symbol, uh, could be any, which is essentially the ticker. Uh, there's a start date, there's an end date, and then you have the data variable, which is the essentially the data frame where I'm using Yahoo Finance dot download, putting the symbol, putting a start date, end date, and defining an interval of one day. You could choose any interval, any ticker, any date. I have just selected these because this is what I usually run with. Now, one of the most basic things that you need to learn and understand the way is the way matplotlib works. So there's a lot of different conditions or steps that you need to write. So you, and, and it's very structural. If you logically think about it, it's very intuitive. So what I've done is I've just captured a series uh, and a series is a, you know, a column essentially from a data frame. So think about a slice of data frame that becomes a column. So closing prices is where I've kept the closing price essentially. I'm just trying to show the most basic plot. Uh, but you know, really trying to explain in each line this time. Uh, the second line is you know plt dot figure, which translates to setting the size. If I try and run this, uh, you know this is twelve by six. You could set it to you know twelve by twelve, and that's the difference you will get. Essentially, you need to maintain the ratio yourself and matplotlib will not automatically do for you. So whatever works best for you, you know, if it's a more longer time window, you might want to go even further, or if it's a shorter time window or more data points, you can go further. For example, you could do something like 16 comma eight and you know, the chart would go further along. So this is something that you have to learn and experiment with. If you make it too small, it will, you know, cause trouble in readability. So if you want to plot multiple indicators, I would suggest you take a wider plot and keep the you know height depending on how much price points that you want to set up. You can also customize some of these parameters like date and price and I'll talk about that. So what am I doing first? I'm trying to give the size, which is you know laying out my canvas size if you think about drawing something. The second aspect is what am I plotting? I'm essentially plotting a series which is closing price and you can look up you know, the, the doc string suggestions that come up if you are using uh, PyCharm or well, I'm guessing everyone would be doing. Uh, here you are setting the title for, I think I've accidentally put a ticker, but this should be ideally symbol. And what happens is then this would print the uh, closing price for SBI and on IS. So that was a typo. So this is setting the title, which is up top. So title goes up top. 
x label which is x axis which is you know the x axis it is set to date sorry the horizontal axis and then the vertical axis is price which is set to price so you can also play with some more parameters which i'll show you in the subsequent set. so this is the most basic plot that you need to definitely understand next what i'm doing is i'm just playing around with it further let's just stick to 16 comma 8 so that you get decent play now here what i'm doing is i'm changing some way uh, certain elements of it you know not a lot but i'm trying to set something like color so the color is red i can change it to you know whatever i want maybe blue if i like and then line style is equals to double dot i can change it to you know a couple of different things i think uh no i think this, there are certain supported values that you get for example this would be interesting you know it's generating like this you could do something which was before so you could do it like and then you have certain markers markers are where you know the the flow changes or data points changes so you are capturing that as well now imagine you are trying to capture uh, certain crossovers and certain you know flux points or places where the data is changing the markers are useful line style and colors are useful when we plot more than one data points on the same chart and we will try to get into that really quickly now so in this price in this chart what i'm trying to do is you know uh, essentially go to maybe I'll, I'll even bump this further so i'll do uh, 20 and 8 so that this is really a long chart so i've calculated two smas uh, two uh, moving averages one is sma5 and ema12 i don't intend to talk about strategies right now but if you think what i've done is this is a relatively complex chart from a, a code perspective i have this three different data points that have been essentially uh, plotted and then you have uh, the colors for them are different and stuff like that you could you could obviously play with these parameters as well for each of them but I've, I've just not done that you you can very happily change that here as you can see that it's the same parameters so i'm again trying to follow the same structure you define the layout you define you say what the plot is about and then as many series as you are uh, plotting call plt.plot so the first line is plotted by closing price the label is close which is recommended in blue since the color is not specified it's defaulting to a color then you have orange which is sma5 and ema12 which is green and then you have the legends that i'm trying to set which is the title x label and y label and eventually you have to i, I think i forgot to talk about it you need to do plt.show if you don't do this ideally uh, I, I have never actually gotten a hang of this sometimes it works and in certain places it doesn't work so it's always a good idea to put plt.show which is putting the plot out all right uh, let's move further now what we'll do is we'll have the same uh, chart which is 28 i would do the resizing but interestingly what we'll try to do is we will also plot volume with this so the first part is essentially the same but i'm trying to do two plots now so what we'll do is we'll have subplots so for each subplot we have different elements so we have one first plot and what sub what does subplot mean think of a big canvas and you have drawn two you know you're stuck two different papers and both of these will be used to represent different elements so the first is closing price and the second is the volume analysis so how have i done it i have called subplots here and essentially subplots will give you a you know a wrapper which provides additional behavior which is essentially translates to it gives you more plots to work with right and uh, you give it a number you can just uh, use some three digits to start with it so this is 211 the next would be 212 and something like that and the next chart these are uh, while these are line charts the second one is a bar chart hence plt dot bar there's a lot of different functions like that for example you can do plt dot uh, and you will see all sorts of options you have bar you have bar labels tons of different plot types um, you can check out the about this in the documentation you if you if you know what kind of uh, for example uh, what what kind of plot 
you're trying to do, you should be able to find the corresponding to it. For example, you see there's a violin plot, there's V lines, there's tons of different kinds of plots. So we'll not go into the types of plots. You can always check that out on online documentation and figure it out. So this is how you plot two more, two charts essentially within the same plot. And now we have reached to a very good degree of complexity. If you think about it, we have two plots. We are plotting, you know, three columns or three series in the first chart and a fourth one in the second subplot. Both of these are, you know, have the same x axis, but the volume and price y axis are different. So this is a fairly complex plot. Now what we'll do is we'll just add and try and look at two different ways of doing the same thing and we'll call it a go. Again, if you've stuck me for so long, thank you for watching so far. Please continue and like and subscribe. So now what I'm trying to do is just doing the same thing with a little different, uh, you know, flavor around it. Trying to do a, a little bit of formatting, a little bit of coloring, etc. So here I've just done open and close. So if you see the structure is same, you see there's a grid here, which is set to true. Now, if I remove the grid, this will look much like the previous plot. So what I've done is I've added a grid here. Now, when do you need a grid? If you want to, you know, do some demarcations or, you know, do do some studies within a certain time period here, the a grid or a essential line step represents a month change. And uh, the, the idea to show this is matplotlib is intelligent enough to automatically put it. All right. That's the first part. The second part is what I've done is if you see there's a gray color line running here, right? So what is happening is this is trying to give you a zone of where things are moving. Now, these might look similar to Bollinger Bands, but they are not. They are basically a color or, a, you know, it, it represents the boundaries between high and low in this chart, essentially how it is moving up and down. You could try and change the color to make it a little more dark and or lighter or uh, typically alpha is that's what color controls it. There's few parameters like these which are which control the uh, you know what, what do I call that or uh, the, the intensity of colors and things like that. So there's you'll have to read that again in the documentation but fairly straightforward. I have put a formatted output here which is uh, you know just a different style of putting it here. If you see previously what I've done in most places is just done a plus. You could do this or you could do a formatted output. Both of them are true and good. Now that's a primer or a starting point on uh, using matplotlib for charting and plotting. You could technically go to uh, chat GPT or BARD and ask for more complex plots or if you have now you know, understood what you're trying to do, the structure will always remain the same, which essentially is, you know, lay out the figure, do the plots, do a fill between, or if you require customizations in there, like, you know, the line thickness, width, uh, colors, intensity, etc, etc. And then do add in the labels and legends, and then you're done. Finally, I'm just gonna hop on and do a quick show of this library which is uh, Plotly. Now in Plotly what you do is you, you have lesser number of lines and you probably get more neater and more structured plots in, in my view. You could uh, always play also around with these charts and these are interactive in some senses. You could actually do a zoom in, zoom out. You could do a selective area and you could zoom in there. So if you see I've, I've tried to zoom in into a, a which is a, a certain number of days. So this, since these are daily data, if I want to do a zoom in, I can just zoom in to between May and June and I'll be able to see all the details that are happening. I can further go down. And if this was uh, further granular data, this would have been really fun to be able to zoom in. So it kind of gives you a dashboard kind of a feeling, which you cannot do in this in matplotlib charts. Now matplotlib charts gen generates images. These are more interactive plots. So the code is really simple. You just say that you call the plotly graph object, which you can call as go here. And you say go figure, uh, which is plot a figure. And then you specify what is the data. 
uh, and what type of plot you're doing, which is scatter plot in this case. And then you specify the closing price and X axis and Y axis essentially, which is the same here. And then you specify some titles. Uh, technically, if you don't do this, I think it will still work. Yeah, does work. But uh, so, so just one line of code, not a lot of specifications to be done. And Plotly is uh, smart enough to figure it out. Now, now what's happening most likely is it's picking this hype uh, parameter because behind the scenes Plotly also uses Matplotlib. So the 20 comma 6 could be being derived from that or somewhere I'm not too sure. So why is it uh, changing size but uh, the length and the width is essentially. But uh, that's that's how you generally do a Plotly chart. All right. So, so that's the whole idea behind uh, showing you the library. You can use Plotly for more interactive plots and make your code a little more visually appealing to people. All right. So that's it. That's uh essentially a small introduction to plotting in python for finances specifically trading data thank you for listening bye bye